is the final video for Edexcel Additional Chemistry Topic 4. Um, and in this video, we're going to be looking at the final group of the periodic table we need to know about, which is the halogens. Now, the halogens are group 7 of the periodic table. So just that, and they include fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine. Now, the first thing to note about the halogens is that you never find them um, on their own just as the element. Because they are very reactive, they are always going to form diatomic molecules. So you never get single atoms of fluorine floating about. You will always get F2, which is fluorine gas, Cl2, chlorine gas, uh, Br2, bromine, and I2, iodine. The first thing we need to know about them is their appearance. So appearance-wise, Okay, what we need to know is that fluorine is a very, very pale um, yellowy gas. So if you were to get a flask of fluorine, it would be a yellow gas. Chlorine is a very pale green gas. So it is, it is very pale in colour, but it is a pale green gas. Bromine is one of only two elements that is actually a liquid at room uh, temperature. So if you had a um, flask of bromine um, just in the air, it is actually a dark red or brown liquid. Um, it does evaporate very easily, so if you heat it up a little bit, it will turn into a kind of brownie gas. But it is a, it is a dark red liquid. And finally, iodine um, is actually a solid at room uh, temperature, and it is a uh, grey solid. Iodine is really nice, actually. When you heat, heat up these um, grey, uh, this grey solid or these grey crystals, it actually evaporates and it forms a really nice purple gas. But when it's a solid, it's actually a grey solid at room temperature. Okay, so that's the appearances. Um, you do need to know a little bit about some of the reactions of these. Uh, so I'm just going to look at a few examples of those. Um, first off, whenever you react uh, one of our halogens with metals, you always get what we call a metal halide. And just as one example of that, let's uh, look at the reaction of um, fluorine with sodium. Okay, so fluorine gas plus sodium metal and you would get sodium fluoride NaF. Okay, balancing this up, we would have, we need a two here, and you have two here. So that's just one example. You're always gonna get a salt, metal halide, or sodium fluoride. Um, is that the same if you would have chlorine and sodium, you'd get sodium chloride or table salt. Um, second example of reactions that you might be asked about um, are reacting the halogens with hydrogen. A very similar idea. This time, let's pick. Um, let's go for chlorine. If we reacted Cl two chlorine with hydrogen, we get hydrogen chloride HCl. Now, you will have seen this before as hydrochloric acid. If you react these two gases together, um, HCl is actually a gas. However, it dissolves very easily um, in water. to form hydrochloric acid. Okay, so if you react one of the halogens, for example, chlorine with hydrogen, you get hydrogen chloride, or um, depending on what, what halogen you use, and that dissolves very easily to form hydrochloric acid. Okay, the last thing we need to know is a bit about the order of reactivity of these halogens. Now, if we... Um, Remember back to our alkali metals, as we went down the group, they actually got more reactive. However, for the halogens, they actually get um, less reactive if you go down the group or more reactive at the, at the uh, top of the group. So fluorine is very reactive. Chlorine is still quite reactive. Bromine is a bit less reactive and the iodine is the least reactive. And we need to know about some experiments about how we can show or prove this. And because fluorine is the most reactive of the halogens, 
F2 is going to react very quickly with anything it uh, comes in contact with. And some of the compounds that it um, forms very readily are uh, salts. So, for example, potassium fluoride, KF, would be a, a very common example of a um, salt formed by the reaction of fluorine. Okay, Once fluorine um, has formed the salt, once it's formed potassium fluoride, this salt is going to be very, very uh, non-reactive or stable now. Um, because fluorine doesn't want, or fluoride, sorry, doesn't want to turn back into fluorine, doesn't want to go back to that reactive gas it started as. Okay, therefore, if you were to try and react potassium fluoride with one of the less reactive halogens, let's say bromine, nothing is going to happen. Bromine is not reactive enough to displace uh, the fluoride from potassium fluoride, therefore you'd see no reaction. However, if you were to try and do this the other way around, if you had potassium bromide, KBr, and you try to react this with fluorine, because fluorine is more reactive, it would be able to displace the bromide from potassium, bro uh, potassium bromide, and you would form KF and Br2. So if you were um, watching this reaction while it took place, potassium bromide is a colourless solution. Fluorine of, I guess you would have fluorine water, would be very, very pale in colour. Potassium fluoride would be a colourless solution. However, the bromine Br2 you form would be a red or orange, um, red or orange compound. So you would visibly see a colour change or reaction happening here. So um, this type of reaction, called the displacement reaction, allows us to easily compare and see which of our halogens is most reactive. Um, and I'm going to draw a table, which you may well see in your exam, which goes through and explains this. So on my left hand side, I'm going to have the halogens themselves. I'm going to have F2. Cl2, Br2, and I2, iodine. And on the top, I'm going to have salts that I could form with these um, halogens. So the example we had here was KF, so let's stick with that. I'm going to have potassium fluoride. I'm going to have potassium chloride. I'm going to have potassium bromide and potassium iodide. So in these reactions, I'm going to start with my um, halide salt. Okay, so I'm going to start with these, and then I'm going to be adding to them um, solutions of the halogens. So fluorine water, chlorine water, bromine water, iodine water. If the halogen um, is reactive enough, it will displace uh, the halide ion from the salt, and we should see a reaction. So for example, because fluorine is more reactive than bromine, fluorine was able to displace the bromide from here and we saw a reaction. So let's fill that one in straight away. We would see a reaction between F2 fluorine and KBr, so that we would see a reaction in a colour change here. Um, just to start us off, we are not going to, we don't, we don't really need to do these ones because we, we don't need to react fluorine with a fluoride salt because um, it'll just be reacting with itself, it's not really going to do anything. So these ones we can um, not do, we can just ignore. So we've already said then that fluorine is reactive enough to displace um, the bromide ion here. We said the other way around, bromine itself is not reactive enough to displace the fluoride from here, so KF and Br, that would be a cross. And the rest of these follow a similar pattern. Fluorine is reactive enough to displace the chloride from potassium chloride, so we would see a reaction or a colour change here. It is also reactive enough to displace iodide um, from potassium iodide. Um, chlorine, Cl2, is not is, is, is less reactive sorry, than fluorine, so it is not reactive enough to displace this salt, so we see no reaction. However, chlorine is more reactive than bromine, so we would see a reaction here. It is more reactive than iodine, so we would see a reaction here. Bromine, we've already said, is less reactive than fluorine, so it will not displace this fluoride um, ion here. It is not as reactive as chlorine, so we will not get a reaction here. However, it will displace or react um, with potassium iodide, so we would form potassium bromide and we would get I2 or iodine. Iodine is the least reactive, it is not reactive enough to displace any of these. So if you were given information about this in an exam, um, you need to be able to talk about and interpret um, the information. One question um, which has come up, if I just show you this, uses the information in this table, but it has it in written form. So it says, uh, the order of reactivity of these three elements, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, can be shown by carrying out displacement experiments. You are provided with a potassium bromide solution, 
which is exactly the same as what I've um, put here. We've got potassium chloride solution, potassium iodide solution, um, and then bromine solution, chlorine solution, iodine solution. They're, they are our halogens down the sides. Describe how these solutions could be used to create experiments to show the order of reactivity. Basically, you need to say how you would do these experiments. You would have your solutions um, of halide salts. You're going to add the bromine, um, chlorine, iodine to them. And you could even draw out this table and use this to explain the order of reactivity with fluorine, the most reactive, down to, well, in fact, fluorine's not in the question, but in this case, chlorine would be the most reactive down to iodine.